So hello everyone, my name is Nate from the California Conventions blog, and I'm here in Fanime 2022 with the guest of honor, David Vincent, voice actor of many different animes to say. <laughs> so um, let's start off at the beginning. Yes. So how, can you tell us about your acting background, from live action to voice acting, and all that jazz? Absolutely. So uh, live acting, you know, I got my start on the stage, and so I did a lot of theater. I started theater in high school, uh, all throughout college, I got my degree in, in uh, journalism. Uh, but I still did every single play uh, that I could do all throughout university and then uh, moved to New York City uh, after I graduated and hit the stage there. And so I did a lot of off-Broadway, I did uh, a lot of stand-up, I did a lot of sketch comedy, and uh, a lot of uh, just stage work uh, in New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was actually the stage work that, that uh, led me into the voiceover world. Ah, so it was pretty much like on the stage that you said like, maybe I should like think about voice acting and the just popped out to you? <laughs> Actually, voice acting kind of came to me. So I started doing some television uh, and things like that in New York as well. And I was actually doing a show in uh, a little theater in New York City called uh, Don't Tell Mamas in Times Square. Hmm. And I was doing a sketch show and I was doing a bit where I was making fun of TV commercials. And so I was doing all these different voices. And uh, there was a voiceover agent in the audience and she came up to me after the show and she said, hey, do you have an agent? And I said, no. And she Ooh. goes, here's my card, you need to call me. And that's, that's how I actually got like, my, my start in the world of voiceover. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it was just one little thing happening. And then yeah, it just I mean, led from there. <laughs> totally. I mean, I'd always loved animation and I had always done voices since I was a kid. And I was obviously an actor. And mm. so uh, voice acting, you know, was, uh, was something that I was always aware of and fascinated with. But, uh, but it wasn't at the forefront of my career at, the, at that moment. And uh, thankfully, yeah, that agent was in the audience that night. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so that's also how it leads up to this kind of big role that you have right now, mm -hmm. voice acting and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to talk about um, what's been happening recently. I know the pandemic has been going on for yes. one and a half years, and you still have to do the role of voice acting as well. Yes. How, how, how is it difficult to work as a voice actor during the pandemic? Like, how are you able to get recording sessions done at home, for example? That is such a great question. Uh, you know, the pandemic changed everything. Uh, and I have to say that the, I, I'm so impressed with how the pandemic, how the voiceover industry adapted and changed. Literally, it was over the course of maybe two to three weeks mm. um, overnight as an industry and adapted to it and didn't miss a beat. So I was directing a series uh, of, of voice series and I was acting in two series uh, when the pandemic hit. And within the span of three weeks, we had completely adapted to where I was able to record from home and also able to direct from home. Wow. And so the engineers, the, um, the you know, directors, the actors, the talent, everybody, uh, everybody involved, we very quickly, and I have to give a lot of credit to the studios uh, that I was working with, one in particular with Bang Zoom, mm. uh, that I was, uh, just right in the middle of directing this series and, and everybody just came together and figured it out. Okay. And, uh, and honestly, it's been, in my opinion, I love the fact that we do that because it, it, it really helps us to accomplish more faster, I think. So, uh, so you get like all the equipment from being Zoom, pretty much bring no, your own? Oh. a lot of the equipment. Well, much, if you're a voice talent, you're gonna have your own equipment right. to a certain extent. Now, my, my equipment, like for instance, a good friend of mine, uh, Sean Schemmel, he uh, is very heavily invested in his technology and has just incredible setup at home that he, he always had. Mm -hmm. Mine was much less so. Um, but even with you know, the, the, the equipment that I had, the engineers that we worked with, the studios that we worked with were able to adopt, uh, adapt, I should mm -hmm. say, and work within the confines of even the, the, the equipment that I had. That's and then I had one studio that did wind up loaning me a, um, uh, a far superior microphone that I had. The right. microphone that I had was like not, not like not, not like a not like yeah. a like a one of the you can stream with or something like that. It was a terrible mic. It was it was a blue snowball microphone. <laughs> you know what, though, it was at least, terrible. You know what, so, though, at least like, now get, I've got a, actually like a really right. nice microphone. At least they can actually provide you like the equipment that you need, and that's helpful, they did. especially yeah. yeah, especially when it comes to this, because I know how tough it'll be. Just not going into the studio, not hanging out with like the other voice actors, and even helping. We miss out. that. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's a tough one. I, I miss seeing people's faces. <laughs> Yeah, you know, exactly. That's, that's and, and then, a big part. And then mingling with like everybody too. So yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And and that that's the main component that, that we miss. 
Mm. Um, is, and are, more studios are now now coming back to where we're going back. Are you guys studios. currently going back, like hanging out and all, like back to, to normal? A, to to an extent, yeah. it's not back to normal. Okay. Um, a lot of uh, recording is still done remote, um, but it, it is starting to, more and more studios are starting to ask that we come back awesome. into the studio. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I, mean, I, know, I know the pandemic is still going on, so. It I, is. It yeah. is obviously a big serious case right now, so. I'm glad that Bang Zoom is currently keeping you safe and also helping you. Yeah, out. every studio that I've worked with, they're, everybody, uh, you know, COVID and safety is always at the forefront of everything that, we, that they do. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so let's actually talk about your voice acting roles in certain sure. animes. Uh, one of your biggest roles was Gilgamesh from the Big Gilgamesh. Yes, Gilgamesh. Uh, yes, Gilgamesh. <laughs> uh, but you also did have a first. You also did have a role, but in the first adaptation for Fate's Day Night as assassin. I did. Yeah, so yeah. from assassin to Gilgamesh, so it's quite a shift in roles change, to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was it like moving from a minor role to a major significant role like Gilgamesh? You know, um, it was. Uh, I was thrilled. Uh, is I and I recall very clearly. Uh, Gilgamesh, because I, I've always thought that Gilgamesh was a really cool character, and I remember getting the audition for Gilgamesh, and I was really sick yeah. when I got it, and, and I had a head cold at the time that yeah. was just uh, second to none, and uh, I remember I couldn't croak out anything, oh, uh, you know, and they asked me to come in and audition, and I'm like, I, I just, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I'm so sick, and they asked me again like three days later, and I was still sick, and they're like, Sorry, but this is the last day that you guys you know can submit. submit. This is way before COVID, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Can you record something from home?" And I was like, "Yeah, I can record something from home with this, uh, you know, very rudimentary rig that I had with a blue snowball microphone." <laughs> and uh, I recorded it, and then um, and then I think I had to do a callback. And what a callback is is that they ask you to come back and, and audition again, mm -hmm. and. By that time, I think I was well enough to go into the studio and, and uh, audition again. And uh, luckily, I landed that role. Yeah. And, and it's just been one of my favorite roles that I've gotten to play for. You've been playing it for like from Fate Zero to years. Fate Grand Order to say. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty Nine big lineup, now? is it? I think yeah. so, yeah. Fate Zero was like. Couple years ago, I believe. Oh no, Fate long Zero time. was 2013, I think. Wow. So it was like nine uh, years. Yeah, it was so nine years like to almost say. We're coming up on a decade of playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if he's in the next one, the Camelot movie, but not sure. I don't know. No I idea. haven't. I haven't really looked into the Camelot movie yet. But yeah. that's the next one that's coming up. But if Gilgamesh is there, you're probably gonna get that up. <laughs> Pretty really sure. So, yeah. <laughs> um, one side note here: Do you play Fate Grand Order? Uh, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I had dinner with a friend of mine last night. Uh, it was so funny. And he's like, I literally had to cut myself off because he was so addicted to playing that game. I, oh, okay, so much, okay, so you're kind of like me because I'm yeah. into F8 Grand Order too. So it's yeah. like I, I kind of want to pull. I don't put any money to pull. You know, yeah. characters. <laughs> <laughs> don't get into that. That's just it. All right, so let's head over to your voice acting in Blaze Blue. Yes, um, oh, Blaze in, Blue. Yes. Yeah. So you're uh, you're actually voiced two uh, characters there, yes. Jin Kisaragi and Hakumen. Yes. Um, Jin and Hakumen both underwent character development across the Blaze Blue franchise. Mm -hmm. What's it like to see the evolution of both characters throughout the entire series? Yeah, you know, they're just cool characters. I think that whole franchise is just an awesome franchise, and I loved getting to play Jin Kisaragi with his crazy obsession with his mm -hmm. brother Ragna. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just love, and I love how the storylines just kind of evolved over the, the, the series. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then Hakumen is kind of like the the, the polar opposite with his, uh, you know, I am the white boy, you know, it's just, to me, I just, I love the, the evolution of characters, um, I'm very partial to Jin Kisaragi, just because I think he's a super fun character with yeah. his crazy obsession, and I love the comedy of it, uh, right. and they have the, they, I love that the, the creators of the series really worked in a lot of, of comedy, because comedy is very special to me, so. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah, um, that's awesome to see that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have to be fair, like, I've only played a couple of Blaze Blue, but I know the people who work in the Calicon blog also love to talk about uh, Blaze yeah. Blue, so they oh, yeah. love to see it's the answers of that. Yeah. It's a great one. <laughs> um, let's talk about your role as Robin from Fate, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem, yeah. yeah. Um, you're been, Robin has been a popular character in Fire Emblem franchise yeah. since, the Awake, since it started in Awakening. Yeah. After being introduced in the game, you've been their main voice actors through Awakening, Heroes, yeah. and yeah. even the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game. Yeah. Um, so first off, are you... So that question. Are you a fan of the Fire Emblem franchise? Like, you know, you know I, I, I wasn't, I, I am now, but yeah. like, I it was interesting when, uh, when I went in to audition for it, I had no clue what Fire Emblem was. Oh. And apparently Fire Emblem was like on its last legs and, and, and they were going to 
essentially, if, that's if what, Awakening didn't do anything. That's what I heard too, because like, yeah. when I heard that Fire Emblem was like in its last legs, Awakening was the last chance for it to actually it was like, the have last a pickup chance. at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I had, I, I, I don't even recall the audition for it because I went and I remember, all I remember is going to the studio and I think that I auditioned for like five different characters mm. and recording the actual movie. I booked it. I don't even really, rec I vaguely remember going in. It maybe took me 30 minutes to go in and, and record these lines. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was at a convention six months after the release that mm. everybody was standing in my autograph line with a fire emblem. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I think, uh, I think this is going to be a popular series. Yeah. And, um, anyway, but I had learned at long after the fact that that, that was, Awakening was Fire Emblem uh, as a franchise. That was their last real shot. Mm. And thankfully it, it really gained a lot of traction love, and, and the fans loved it. And so, yeah, I love, the I, fact, I love the fact that it was a really long series from like the old NES days to, yeah. uh, to the GameCube to the, to the Wii. I didn't know that it actually was gonna falter until, until they talked about Awakening. And yeah. It started to become popular ever since. Now yeah. you'd see a lot of Fire Emblem games now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're on the uh, characters in Super Smash. And yeah, Smash, I know. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, aside from the games you were involved in, uh, do you have a favorite Fire Emblem game? Um, you know, aside from the ones that I'm in, I, obviously Awakening is, is, I think, very, very special. I think Three Houses was really cool. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, you know, just uh, from my understanding, I mean, Robin wasn't necessarily uh, is a, is a part of that no. uh, that series, but uh, but I think uh, that Three Houses was was very special as well. I, I was a fan of it too, so. Yeah. yeah. Which house are you? Oh, gee whiz. Uh, it's Dimitri, uh, what is it, whatever one. The Blue Lions, I think. Yeah, Blue Lions. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, you're Blue Lions. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a golden deer myself. So, are you? Yeah. Okay. I kind of like Claude. Okay, he's, yeah. he's cool. He's cool. <laughs> um, I got a question from one of our fans who played Fire Emblem Awakening. Have yeah. you played the game, by the way, Fire Emblem I have Awakening? not. Okay, I, can't, I yeah. cannot do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, Ryan. Um, sorry, I Ryan. cannot answer that for you. I played <laughs> Mash. Yeah. Um, so, have you played Smash as Robin? I have. Um, is he your main or something? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, of course. I thought, uh, I thought yeah, like, okay. for others who play Smash, it's like, oh, Robin is like, oh, I don't know if I like him. Then they oh, switch yeah. to another character or something. Uh, well, I play just out of sheer, you know, uh, what I, I should say, uh, just obsession, I, because I voice the characters. I'll play Robin and then I'll play uh, Richter Belmont. Ooh, yeah. uh, just, to, just to see what the characters that I voiced are all about, mm -hmm. you know. So you just like toy around and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not like a great player or anything. I get my. I'm not. I'm not a great player. Every time I try. I mean, I try my best with like my character, like Tuning, for example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes I will do well. Sometimes I'll do bad. Especially yeah. when it comes to professional tournaments, I'm like, I'm not gonna touch that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to another series called Kill a Kill. Uh, nice. You have a notable role in Kill a Kill as Senketsu. Yes. Uh, first off, what was your reaction when you were told you were going to be? You were going to play a significant role as a piece of clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I gotta tell you, when I, I remember when uh, when you get the audition, you get this what are called sides, right? right. And that's just the, the script, uh, for lack of a better term, that uh, comes in and, and you see your lines that you're gonna audition for this character. And they, but uh, oftentimes, if you're lucky, you'll get a picture of what the character looks like. Mm. And I looked at that and I was like, this guy's a jacket. <laughs> How do you come up with a voice for a jacket? <laughs> You know, and yeah. so I was just like, okay, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting one. It but, a, yeah, what a cool series, man! It was a really good series. I mean, yeah. it does; ha it did have its like. <laughs> I would explain a lot moments. of this. It had yeah. its moments, but to say the least, it was one of the notable series from uh, what was it? Um, it was not Gainax. It was um, Trigger. Trigger. Oh uh, yeah, Studio company. Trigger. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also do play the voice of Sinketsu also in the video game. Mm -hmm. What differences in your performance do you make? Playing Senketsu and Kill a Kill compared to the anime. Oh, Kill a Kill. Yeah, oh, the compared to game the anime. versus the show. Yeah, not much of a difference. Um, really, it's uh, it's this it's this is more technical versus character. Uh, but when you're recording a, a anime versus a, a video game, uh, you get a lot less context, and you really rely heavily on your director mm. to let you know why you're saying what you're saying. Because essentially, it's a spreadsheet, and you have your line, and that's it. And there's no context of why you're saying mm. anything. Um, in the anime, there's a lot more back and forth. Alex von David was the voice director, mm -hmm. and Hiro, Hiroe uh, uh, Sukamoto, if I don't butcher her last name, <laughs> um, it was the, the <coughs> pardon me, the lead producer from uh, Anaplex. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, they both were heavily involved in uh, the recording of that series. And so 
I really was able to rely and, and collaborate with them quite a bit on the anime series. On the video game series, it was very quick just because, uh, again, it's their video game, there's not a lot of context. You just, the director's gonna tell you why you're saying what you're saying. So you're just saying a little bit of lines and then it's just a little bit of the game. It's yeah. only like what, yeah. like a small dialogue compared to like the anime. Very small dialogue as yeah. opposed to 26 episodes. I think it was 26 episodes. Yeah, about 26, yeah. Yeah, 26 episodes of like full a on A lot series. of talking, yeah, it's, yeah I gotcha. <laughs> um, Let's talk about your role in as Nazi Turbine from Gundam Iron Blood Orphans. Sure. Uh, personally, did you? Oh gosh. Uh, personally, did you think they did Nazi and the rest of the Tech Condon crew dirty during season two of the show? So, yeah. I mean, this was a. It, I, I'm assuming, and with I don't want to give away spoilers. So, it's spoiler alert if you're. Oh if you yeah. Seen um, it, but, well, um, I'm probably gonna put a spoiler tag okay. right there. So there is. Uh, there was a. Um, is this, I'm assuming that they're talking about the part where Nazi goes bye bye. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah, that part. Yeah, man. I was like, <laughs> hey, I'm with you on that. Yeah. He was a great character, and I was so sad to see, uh, you know, what what happened um, with him. And and to be honest with you, like, I was really in the moment when we were we were recording that series, and I remember the, the producer uh, told me, he's like, oh, okay, are you ready for uh, for Nazi's big scene? And I'm like, what scene? Uh... And I was like. Oh, <laughs> one of those. And so, yeah, I'm with you on that one. I think that uh, that he did. Yeah. Uh, um, so there's that was for the, that was for yeah. one of the questions from the blog crew. Um, yeah. So you guys got your answer there, guys. <laughs> uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about one of your popular roles in Bleach. You were Grim Jow. And, yes. Oh. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, you're okay. I mean, you're a fan, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was um, awesome. Uh, yeah. Off camera, she's like. Really? <laughs> I yeah. think she never knew that, just because. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> so, do you hope you'll be able to reprise him in the future in some capacity with the Revival of the Anime series coming soon? I do, of course. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved... Grim Jow is honestly one of my absolute favorite characters that I've ever gotten to voice uh, throughout the entirety of my career. Uh, he's extremely special to me. Um, so, when I heard, number one, that he wasn't dead in the manga, I got super excited. And then when the anime series came out, uh, I have no clue about anything what's happening with the anime series, um, but I've heard that his character comes back. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if it's a cameo or if it's a uh, you know a significant part of the series or not. But I don't care if he says one line. I I would love to uh, reprise that role. Awesome. I mean, from what I've been seeing, I know there's an anime series coming out. I haven't seen the whole details of what. Bleach, the new series, is going to be, but yeah. knowing that Grimjack is going to be there, we gotta have to ask you about that. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. No, I, I, you definitely I, do, do a good role with him too. Yeah, I know you, Bleach yeah. has been a long time ago too, yeah, so it's like been, it's been an old one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, an old series, but wow, you, you know about this role that's come back and all. So yeah, yeah, but it's it's one of the top ten anime anime franchises. I think of all time is what I had read. So yeah, it's like manga wise too, because a lot of people also read the manga as well. Yeah. so yeah. it's a popular, popular yeah. series. In anime. Very popular franchise. Let's talk about your role in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because it's pretty significant that you're the narrator of the show. Yeah. There's not many roles, you're just a narrator. <laughs> I'm the narrator of the whole series. Um, yeah. yeah. So here's the thing there's a lot of other characters that also come in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yes. If you could have played another person in the cast, who would it have been and why? Jolene. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm being facetious. No. I, I, I say that because uh, I, I love Kira Buckland mm -hmm. to death and yeah. I think that she has just knocked it out of the park. Yes. Um, I, I don't want to see any of those characters. I think are so fun. Um, I love, uh, golly, what's that weird dog character? I forgot his name. I forget oh. that one. Anybody in the back know? I don't know who you're talking about. But I Steve think. Prince plays yeah. him, and, uh, and I always was like, that is the weirdest looking character. <laughs> um, maybe that guy or... Um, I don't know, Joe Star. Forget about what? it. Joe Star. Yeah. yeah. I want to see that. I want to see I don't know. I mean, I could also see it was Dio. I guess I was gonna say I was gonna say see yeah. it was Dio. You yeah, know? It was Dio was Dio. awesome. <laughs> you totally see that through the voice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I always know you as a narrator, and you also do a good role at that. I was like, thank you. You could yeah. probably do another first person. I in do there, some you know? smaller characters all throughout it. I'm peppered throughout it, but uh, but I've narrated the entire series. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, last question here. Um, we're gonna go back into your live action, at live acting versus voice acting. Sure. In your history of acting, I've noticed that you have some live action roles before, but it seems that voice acting has been your main career. Yes. 
what made you this? Well, what made you decide to say like, hey, um, I'm just gonna keep it as it is, like not really going like. I think voice acting is gonna be my main thing. Yeah. Not, I mean, you do have your live acting roles, I think, a couple of times. Yeah. But is voice acting gonna be your mainstay? Yeah. So on camera acting and live acting is um, is absolutely compelling to me, and it's it's something that is immensely creatively fulfilling. But you know, where the the majority of the work that I have gotten to be a working actor is really the key word there is working, and so um, that's where I've gained you know the majority of my roles in traction as as uh, as an actor as a performer has been in the voice world. And so that's where I've focused my energy and effort into. And the more energy and effort you focus into, the more you know uh, results you get. So it, in addition, I also direct and, um, and other things too. So my, my schedule um, you know, is, is pretty full. And so I can really kind of focus. I would love to go back and like do a stage show. Uh, one, of, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Tony Oliver, um, still occasionally will find time to go in and do a theater production mm. and uh, going to see live theater is one of my favorite things to do too and I love that I've, I'll always uh, you know just be fascinated with it by, but for me it is just about where you know uh, professionally where I'm gaining um, the most traction I folk I put my efforts and energies into seems like the way that your future is looking through is mostly in voice acting and pretty much so far you've been great so far with Thank all you. the roles that you've got with Gilgamesh Thank um, to Kill a Kill to Bleach just you know. new one um, that that I did I don't know if it I don't was you want to say it with no I can say this, <laughs> okay, this okay. Is, there's a series called Jujutsu Kaisen oh yes oh yeah. yes and uh, I play Kento Nanami oh uh, the guy with the, the glasses yes, the yeah. goggles and wow. so that one has been super fun uh, to be a part of and I've got more coming out that I can't talk about just yet I was gonna say yeah. like yeah don't talk about future projects because yeah. I'm pretty sure they're oh it's an RDA yeah. yeah it's an RDA thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think that's it for us here. Great. So thank you very much, David, for absolutely. a great day. Um, I hope you have an awesome Fanime 2022. Yes, I'm um, to be here. Yeah, it's awesome to see you awesome. again, David. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um, this is Nate from the CaliCon blog signing off for our interview with David Vincent.